the life and teachings of the masters of the Far East by Bard T. Spaulding, Chapter 3. We left this village for Asma, a smaller one, about 90 miles distant. Emil assigned two younger men to accompany us. These men, fine, erect specimens of the Hindu type, were to have charge of the entire expedition. The perfect ease and poise with which they accomplished their tasks surpassed any of our former experiences. For convenience of identification, I am calling these two men Jass and Nepro. Emil was the one that received us and looked after our welfare at the village from which we took our departure. He had many more years experience than the others. Jas was the executive head of the expedition while Nepro was his assistant and saw that all orders were carried out. Emil sent us away with a few remarks in which he said, You are about to start on your expedition with these two men, Jast and Nepro, to accompany you. As you travel, it will take about five days to journey to your next important stopping place about 90 miles distance. I will tarry here for a time being because... It will not be necessary for me to consume that time to cover that distance, but I will be there to greet you. I wish to ask that you leave one of your party here in order to make observations and corroborate what may happen. In this way, time will be saved and he will be able to join the expedition not later than 10 days hence. We simply ask him to watch and report what he sees. We started with Jast and the pro in charge of the expedition. And I wish to say that more business-like arrangements could not well be imagined. Every detail was complete and swung into line with the rhythm and precision of music. This harmony was maintained throughout the entire expedition, which lasted three and a half years. I wish here to add my impressions of Jast and the pro. Jast was a fine, upstanding Hindu, kind, efficient, with no bluff or bluster. Every order he gave was almost in a monotone and executed with precision and snap that caused us to wonder. From the very outset, we could see a fineness of character that caused much comment. The pro, a wonderful character, was here, there, and everywhere, always cool, collected, and a marvel of efficiency. There was always the same calm accompanied by quiet precision of movement with wonderful power to think and execute. This was so marked that every member of the expedition commented upon it. Our chief remarked, those fellows are wonderful. It is a relief to find people who can think and execute. We arrived at the appointed village about four o'clock on the fifth day, and here was Emil to greet us as he had agreed. Can you imagine our amazement? We were quite certain we had come by the only travel route and by the swiftest mode of locomotion in that country, except as couriers go. They travel in relays and go night and day. Here was a man, as we thought, well advanced in years, and one we felt would in no wise be able to negotiate a journey of 90 miles in less time than it required us to do the same. Yet here he was. 
Of course, we all tried to ask questions at once and were eager to hear. These were his words. I said, when you departed, that I would be here to greet you. I am here. I wish to call your attention more fully to the fact that man in his right domain is limitless, knows no limit of time nor space. Man, when he knows himself, is not obliged to toil wearily along for five days to accomplish 90 miles. Man, in his right estate, can accomplish any distance. It matters not the magnitude. Instantly. A moment ago, I was in the village from which you departed five days ago. What you saw as my body still reposes there, your associate, whom you left in that village there, will tell you that until a few moments before four o'clock I conversed with him stating that I would go greet you as you would arrive here about this hour. What you saw as my body is still there and your associate still beholds it although it is at present inactive. This was done simply to show you that we are able to leave our bodies and greet you at any appointed place at any specified time. The two who accompanied you could have accomplished the journey as I have. In this way, you will more readily realize that we are only ordinary humans of the same source as you, that there is no mystery, but that we have developed the powers given all by the Father, the Great Omnipotent One, more fully than you have. My body will remain where it is until night. Then I will bring it here, and your associate will proceed on his way here as you did, arriving in due time. After a day's rest, we will journey to a small village, one day off, where we will tarry one night. Then return here and meet your associate to see what his report will be. We will assemble this evening in the lodge. In the meantime, farewell. In the evening, after we had assembled, Emil, without opening the door, suddenly appeared in our midst and said, You have seen me appear in this room, as you would say, by magic. Let me say there's no magic about it. Here is a simple experiment which you can behold. You can see this. Consequently, you will believe. Kindly gather around so that you can see. We have a small glass of water which one of your number has just brought from the spring. You see that a minute particle of ice is forming in the very center of the water. You see it gather to itself, particle by particle, more ice, until now the whole of the water in the glass is frozen. What has happened? I held the central atoms of the water in the universal until they became formed or in other words I lowered their vibrations until they became ice and all the other particles formed around them until the whole has become ice. You can apply this to the little glass the tub, the pond, the lake, the sea, the whole mass of the water of the earth. What would happen? All would be frozen, would it not? To what purpose? None. 
You ask by what authority? I say by using a perfect law. But in this case, to what end? Nothing, as no good has been accomplished or could be accomplished. Had I gone on to determine, determined to carry this out fully, what would have happened? The reaction. To whom? To me? I know the law and what I express returns to me as truly as I express it. Therefore, I express only the good and the good returns to me only as good. You can readily see that had I persisted in the freezing, the cold would have re reacted upon me long before I had accomplished the end. And I would, in reaping the harvest of my desire, have been frozen. Whereas if I express the good, I reap the harvest of my good eternally. My appearance in this room tonight may be explained in this way. In the little room where you have left me, I held my body in the universal by raising its vibrations until it returned to the universal. Or, as we say, returning it to the universal where all substance exists. Then, th through my... I am my Christ consciousness. I held my body in my mind until its vibrations were lowered and it took form right here in this room. And you could see it. Wherein is there any mystery? Am I not using the power or the law given me by the Father through the beloved Son? Is not this Son, you and I and all mankind? Wherein lies the mystery? There is none. Consider the faith represented by the mustard seed. It comes to us from the universal through the Christ within which has already been born within us all. As a minute speck, it enters through the Christ or superconscious mind, the place of receptivity within ourselves. Then it must be carried to the mounts or highest within ourselves, to the very top of the head, it is held there. We must then allow the Holy Spirit to descend. Now comes the admonition. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and with all thy mind. Think. Does the meaning come? Heart, soul, strength, mind. Is there anything to do at this point but to turn it all over to God, the Holy Spirit, the whole I, Spirit in action? This Holy Spirit comes in many ways perhaps as tiny entities tapping and seeking admittance. We must accept and allow this Holy Spirit to come in and unite with the minute point of light or seed of knowing and resolve, revolve around it and adhere to it just as you saw the particles of it, particles of ice adhere to the central particle and it will grow and form particle by particle, circle 
by circle, just as the ice multiply and express that seed of knowing until you are able to say to the mountain of difficulties, be thou removed and cast into the sea and it will be done. Call this forth dimension or what you wish. We call it God and expression through the Christ in us. It is in this way the Christ was born. Mary, the great mother, perceived the ideal. The ideal was held in mind, then conceived in the soil of her body, held for a time there, then brought forth or born as the perfect Christ child, the firstborn, the only begotten, the Son of God. He was nourished and protected, given the very best of the mother, watched over and cherished until he grew from childhood into manhood. It is thus the Christ comes to all of us first as an ideal planted in the soil of our soil, the central part where God is held. in mind as the perfect ideal then brought forth or born as the perfect child the Christ consciousness you who have seen what has been accomplished here doubt your own eyes I do not blame you I get the thought of hypnotism from the minds of some my brothers is there one here who feels that he does not have the power to exercise every God-given faculty that he has been seen brought forth tonight do you think for a moment that I am in any way controlling your thought or vision do you think that I could if I would cast a hypnotic spell over you any or all of you for did you not all see is it not recorded in your own great book that Jesus entered a room with the doors closed he just came in as I have done do you think for a moment that Jesus the great master and teacher needed in any way to hypnotize he used his own God-given power as I have done tonight let me say that I have done nothing but what each one of you can do not only you but every child that is or has been born into this world or universe has the same power to do just what you have seen accomplish this night I wish to get this clearly before your minds let me also say that you are individuals that you are not personalities that you are free wills not automatons Jesus did not need to hypnotize we do not need to hypnotize doubt us all you wish until you are fully satisfied as to our honesty. But the idea of hypnotism away for the time. Put the idea of hypnotism away for the time. Or at least let it lie passive until you have gone deeper into the work. All we ask is that you keep an open mind.